Hi guys! So I've put together a list of as many always, sometimes, never questions that I could find for parallelograms. And I've also put the flow chart in the upper right corner of how a quadrilateral leads to either parallelogram, kite, or trapezoid, and then down from there. So hopefully that will help you on some of the questions if you need to just look back at that. So there's 21 of these, I think, so I'm going to go through them kind of at a fast pace so we can get through all of them. So number one, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if the diagonals are congruent. Well, that would be sometimes true. I'm just going to put an S for sometimes because in an isosceles trapezoid, the, par the diagonals are also congruent. So it would sometimes be a parallelogram, and the other times it would be an isosceles trapezoid. Now number two, if a parallelogram is equilateral, then it is equiangular. Well, I'm going to say sometimes for this also because I can think of a rhombus, which is equilateral, but it's not equiangular. So the four sides are congruent, but the four angles are definitely not congruent. But in a square, it would be. So that's why it would be sometimes. So the four angles of a square are equal as well as the sides. So that would be sometimes. Number three, if two angles of a trapezoid are congruent, then it is isosceles. Now, the first reaction to this question is all students say always, but it isn't always. It's only sometimes true. It would definitely be true sometimes because we have the base angles congruent in an isosceles trapezoid. But what if I made the trapezoid just like this? And then I made that side angled, and I made it in such a way that that angle and that angle were 90 degrees with each other. Well, two angles are congruent, but it's no longer an isosceles trapezoid. So that's a sometimes. Number four, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if all angles are right angles. That is always true. Because if we have a four-sided figure with all four angles being 90 degrees, that would force it to be a rectangle. And a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, so that would be always true. Number five, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if one pair of opposite sides is congruent and one pair of opposite sides is parallel. Well, that would be sometimes true. They're trying to trick you there. Um, if it's drawn in such a way that they say this pair of sides is co congruent and this pair of sides is parallel, that's not enough to show that it's a parallelogram um, because, if I drew it a little differently, that could just be the description of an isosceles trapezoid because we'd have those congruent and then these would just be parallel. I'm actually going to get rid of this picture. Um, so that's why it would only be sometimes, because it could, I mean, it could be a parallelogram. They might only show us this, but it might also be true that these are parallel and these are congruent. So it's sometimes true. Number six, a rhombus is a kite. Well, that is always true. Now, for that, you can just use the flow chart. Since the rhombus is below a kite, a rhombus is always a kite. Remember, when we're, when we're going up in the diagram, we can say always. I drew this on last week's notes. So a rhombus is a kite always. A square is a rhombus always. Um, and when you're trying to go downward in the diagram, that gives you a sometimes answer. So to say a rectangle is a square, well, that's sometimes. A parallelogram is a rhombus, that's also sometimes. And then remember, to go sideways is never. Like if they say a parallelogram is a trapezoid, that's never true. Okay, so continuing on, number seven, an isosceles trapezoid is a parallelogram. Well, 
perfect example. That's never true because that's trying to go sideways in the flowchart. Okay, second page here. We've still got the flowchart. Number eight, the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors. That is always true. That is a property of a rhombus. If I draw an example, it's easy to see. If I have the diagonals intersecting, they do create a 90 degree angle with each other. And because a rhombus is a parallelogram, the diagonals are bisected. Um, and so since that is a property of rhombuses, we can say that that's always true. Number nine, if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is parallel and congruent, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. That would never be true because that is the way to prove that something is a parallelogram, and a parallelogram is never an isosceles trapezoid. It would look like this in a diagram if they picked one pair of sides and made them congruent and also parallel. That's one of the five ways of proving that you have a parallelogram. And again, you can check back on my notes from last week. I laid out all of the ways to prove a, that you have a parallelogram. I believe there were five different ways. Number 10, if a quadrilateral has four right angles, then it is a rectangle. That is always true. That is the way of proving that you have a rectangle. Um, in fact, no, I won't even say that. This is all, just always true. We have some other questions coming up that will answer the other question. Number 11, if a quadrilateral has one right angle, then it is a rectangle. Okay, well that would be sometimes true, because it definitely could be a rectangle if all the other ones are right angles as well, but it could be that example I showed you before of a trapezoid. Remember on the front page I made, made it so that those are both 90? So that definitely has one right angle, but it's a trapezoid, not a rectangle. So that's why this would be sometimes. Number 12, if a parallelogram has one right angle, then the other angles are right angles. That is always true. I'll write it at the very end here. Always true. Um, because they said it's a parallelogram in the first place. So if I know that it's a parallelogram, and one of the angles is 90. Well, it's a property that the opposite angles are equal, so that angle has to be 90. And the adjacent angles or consecutive angles have to be supplements, so that forces both of these corners to also be 90. So all of the angles are right angles, which also if they ever ask you if it's a rectangle, if it's a parallelogram with one right angle, then it is always a rectangle. That would be a separate question. Number 13, if a diagonal of a quadrilateral is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal, then the quadrilateral is a kite. That is always true. Because that is a property of kites. If you have a kite, and you draw in the diagonals, one of them is the perpendicular bisector of the other. We have a right angle, and then this shorter one in my picture has been bisected. Number 14, consecutive angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Well, that would sometimes be true. If we have consecutive angles, they don't have to be congruent. Like this angle could be 120, and same with this one, and then the consecutive angles to both of those would only be 60. So in that situation, they're not, the consecutive angles are not congruent, but what if I made it a rectangle? And then they're all 90, so not only are the opposite angles congruent, but the consecutive ones are also. So that's why that answer would be sometimes. Okay, now our last page, number 15, the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Mm 
that is always true because that's a property of kites. Number 16, a kite is a rhombus. Okay, we'll look at our flow chart. That's saying a kite is a rhombus that's moving down in the chart. So that means it's a sometimes. A square is a rhombus. Well, that's moving up in the chart, which means that that's an always answer. So remember, up is always, down is sometimes. Number 18, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if each pair of consecutive angles is supplementary. Well, that would be always true because if each pair of consecutive angles is supplementary, that forces the opposite sides to be parallel because that is a theorem that if consecutive angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel and then we would for sure know that this is describing a parallelogram. So that is always true. Number 19, if the diagonal of a quadrilateral divides each angle into two 45 degree angles, then the quadrilateral is a square. Well, that is also always true because if you think about it, now just pretend that I'm not really drawing a square. Let's just think of it as a generic four-sided shape, but if I draw a diagonal in and then each of these is split into 45, it's kind of hard to see, but 45, 45, and then 45, 45, well first of all those corners are 90, but the other thing that all these 45's tell us is that we have parallel sides here and parallel sides there, which would cause these other two corners to also be 90 degrees. And so now we have all four corners being 90 degrees and the opposite angles are being bisected, which does not happen in a, just a generic rectangle. It only happens when you're doing it in a square. So this always makes it a square. Um, I'll show you real quick because I think we have time. If I have a rectangle and I draw in a diagonal, you can even just see See how this angle is smaller than this one. So in a rectangle, the angles are not bisected by the diagonal. Okay, so now number 20, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if diagonals are congruent. Well, that's sometimes true, but the time when it wouldn't be true is in an isosceles trapezoid because in that figure, the diagonals are also congruent but it's not a parallelogram. And the last one, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral are congruent, the quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid. Well, for the same exact reason, it's sometimes, because it could be an isosceles trapezoid like I just drew, or it could be a rectangle, because in a rectangle, this diagonal is equal to that diagonal and a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, so it causes that answer to be sometimes. Now, I would recommend if you had difficulty answering any of these on your own, I would look back at my video that had to do with, it had the flow chart, it had the different ways to prove parallelogram, and it also showed the different properties of parallelograms according to their diagonals. Um, and that would be really good to look back at to just review if you had any trouble with any of these questions. You can just search for parallelogram on my main page of my blog and that post will come right up at the top. So I hope this helps.